This is how most people remember her. You know, short, spiky, blonde hair and red glasses. But we also had a whole red phase. Tonight, we're taking you for a trip down memory lane to a time 30 years ago when New Haven was the scene of a national syndicated talk show. Sally Jesse Raphael, who was the first woman of daytime TV talk, came to WTNH in June of 1987. Three days a week, a live studio audience would arrive here. Were you in that crowd? Sally would leave here and settle in New York City. Her show would last about 20 years. I think New Haven did form me and get me ready for New York. So I wish the uh, people in New York had been as nice as the people in New Haven. Extremely happy, personally and professionally, to be here. And that's how it started, with a news conference. Sally Jesse Raphael was given the key to the city and a lavender t-shirt which read, London, Paris, Rome, and New Haven. WTNH general manager Lou Freifeld had known Sally from working with her in news in Miami and jumped on the chance to have her call the station home. All right, so here's the studio now. Take a look around. Do you remember where Sally was? I want to say the, the main uh, area was up here. You're right. To this day, there are still pieces of the show backdrop on the wall of the studio. Sally's show caused a lot of buzz. Looking back, it was a snapshot of where society was at the time. Interfaith marriages on the next Sally. Sally was nominated for multiple Emmys. She took home a statue in 1989. It was an incredible journey. Richard Penna was the guy she picked to do her hair, and he was along for the whole ride of the show. They became lifelong friends. He is forever grateful for the international whirlwind life the show afforded him. He misses it to this day. Penna created Sally's short haircut that everybody wanted. This is where how most people remember her. You know, short, spiky, blonde hair and red glasses. But we also had a whole red phase. Penna continues to see Sally often. Richard Penna, I'm happy to say, has become one of my very best friends. And he's just enriched my life tremendously. Um, I'd go anywhere in the world and do anything for him. I think he'd do the same for me. We talked about her signature red glasses. The simple story, the teleprompter was becoming fuzzy for her. So she picked up a cheap pair of glasses that happened to be red, and the rest is history. Now, you come to hate them. And the reason is if you've worked your whole life and you've studied and you've acted, uh, I've done something like 52 movies and I've done three Broadway shows. You work and I've done Shakespeare. To be known for red glasses, you know, what's that about? We spoke to Sally at her sprawling 53-room Queen Anne Manor in Pauling, New York. Elmwood was built in 1743. She and her husband, Carl, bought it about 20 years ago. It's a museum for all the things they have collected in their travels around the world. They bought the place sight unseen because of its expansive porch. They soon found out that it would need a ton of restoration. Sally, now 82, loves having her house full of people. You never know who might show up for lunch. The more, the merrier. I'll tell you a secret. It's kind of strange. I developed a hobby quite a few years ago. And the hobby is that I appear in small, teeny little roles in films under another name. She built an empire as the first lady of daytime talk, preceding Oprah by several years. The show came to an end when she was in her late 60s. The company kept the Maury Povich show and Jerry Springer. In her words, they got rid of the girl. Were you ready to say goodbye when they said goodbye no, to you? No, I was not. I also think there was another mitigating circumstance, and that was that I had um, developed cancer, and I was stupid enough to tell the boss uh, not that I wanted any time off for anything. In fact, 
I went for chemo. This is now 15 years ago. I went for chemo at 6 in the morning and arrived at, on the set at 8.30 and never missed a day. Uh, but I believe that they, that was part of, well, we, she's sick, we better let her go. Sally beat the cancer. The knife in the chest was having to go to the people who worked with me and tell them that their, the show was not going on. That, that hurt a lot. I was never interested in being noticed. I wouldn't go someplace to be seen. I did like working, and I do like working, and I miss work. Sally still owns a little place in Lyme, Connecticut, where she comes up on summer weekends and does fly fishing. Wave to her if you see her headed up I-95.